Good morning, families, friends, community. We are so excited to welcome you today to our in-person graduation. Just wanted to give you a heads up for those of you who want to be taking pictures. The students will be um, coming in from this side, so you'll be able to see them as they enter, which is a change from how we've done things in the past. Also a reminder, please silence your phones. And masks are required for all of our um, audience members, so please keep those on throughout the duration of the ceremony. We really appreciate it. We are really excited to be able to host this in person with your students and celebrate together. So thank you for honoring that. And with that said, let us begin the commencement ceremony for the class of 2021. Thank you. Please remain seated so that when the uh, graduates come in, everybody has a chance to see their student. Thank you. Class of 2021.
Uh, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thanks. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. I'm Tony Dietz, uh, President of the ASA Board of Governors, and from the whole board, I want to congratulate the parents, the teachers, and most especially the graduates of the class of 2021. What an accomplishment. I tell you, it is inspiring to stand up here and see all of you, knowing the journey you took to get here. You're all heroes. I mean it, each and every one of you, truly incredible. I've been thinking about you all a lot this past year, about how unique your moment in time is. No other graduates have faced what you have faced. Yours has been a real hero's journey. You remember the hero's journey, right, from English studies? Was it ninth grade, maybe? Anyway, <laughs> forgive me if I go on about it. I'm an engineer, so it's either this or a discussion of entropy and the second law of thermodynamics. Trust me, you don't want that. Actually, it could, might be quite interesting. No, no, I'll talk about this. Um, the hero's journey, it's a universal trope in storytelling. It's the structure behind the Odyssey, Lord of the Rings, Jane Eyre, Harry Potter, even Hamilton. For ASA, I should say, especially Hamilton. I mean, here are the beats. The hero in the normal world, he is the call to adventure. Hamilton journeys to the mainland and joins the Continental Congress. You got your lottery number for ASA. Next, the hero meets their mentor. For Hamilton, it was Washington. For you, well, you know the teacher I'm talking about. Then the hero crosses the threshold into the unknown. Hamilton goes to war. You crossed into a virtual war, world war, this last year and a half of Zoom, masks, and distancing. The hero suffers an ordeal, their lowest point, the abyss. Hamilton before Yorktown. You, isolated, wondering if you'll ever return to campus, ever get to graduate. Then the resurrection, the hero returns with the elixir. Hamilton gets treasury. You return to school to graduate, triumphant, vaccinated. In the end, the hero is back in their world, but different for their journey. Anything is impossible. Hamilton, he was immortalized by Lin-Manuel Miranda in a hip hop musical. And you, well, I can't wait to see what you heroes will do. I'm sure it will be incredible. All I can say is, forgive me for this, History has its eyes on you. <laughs> now, it's my great honor to introduce our head of school and fearless leader, Leah Fregulia. Oh, good morning, ASA families, uh, faculty and staff, ASA leadership team, members of the ASA board of directors, honored guests, and most importantly, class of 2021. Yeah. We cannot let a moment pass without saying a heartfelt thanks to our parents and guardians, grandparents, aunts and uncles, siblings who have been the support and backbone for these seniors these past 18 or more years. We are a small but mighty gathering here today to celebrate these outstanding young people, and I'm elated to be sharing this moment with you face to face, and by the way, I think we can be loud enough. <laughs> Class of 2021, you have earned every single second of this day, this celebration and this achievement, your high school graduation. Although we did not get to spend nearly enough time with you on campus, your leadership, your scholarly interests, activism, creative endeavors as a class have been felt deeply throughout campus and our community. Thank you for investing yourselves, your leadership, your passions, and your purpose in ASA. Whether it was just for a few years, six, or all eight, we are all here today to honor and center you in the moment of moving between two important phases of your life, 
with pride and with love. To carry on with the theme, as you move beyond ASA, I hope you will always carry just a little piece or a lot of your ASA home. So it is my privilege today to introduce you to our vice president, to principal, vice president, that's awesome, <laughs> vice, vice principal of student support and assessment, Liz Clark. Before becoming a VP in 2018, Liz spent five fabulous teaching years in the 10th grade classrooms teaching social studies where she was much loved and respected as a teacher and as a faculty leader, Liz Clark. Hello everyone, congratulations class of 2021. So exciting. Ah, it is just so wonderful that we can all be in person together and celebrate together all of the success artistically, academically, and outside of classroom for this class. They are wonderful. Um, this is the first entire class that I did not have the honor of teaching. So I was an administrator as they were going up. Um, but it has been such a joy to watch all of you grow and learn and become the wonderful young adults you are today. Um, I have the honor today of getting to introduce our faculty and student selected speakers for this occasion. And first up, we have two faculty selected speakers, uh, not sorry, student selected speakers from the faculty. Uh, this, uh, in my time, I've not seen two together, but I could not think of a more dynamic duo to be presenting this today. Um, so they were two of our senior officers who did a fantastic job this year especially since we were online, transitioning back into person, making sure that the spirits were high and our class of 2021 was united throughout. So it was my pleasure to introduce Najmiya Pack and Eva Pruitt. Thank you for that introduction. Are you ready? Yes. That, that it will never come again is what makes life so sweet. As Emily Dickinson meant in that statement, there are some moments that you only get once or twice in a lifetime. Like the adrenaline I get from standing directly under a music artist at a concert. Or the elation of standing at the top of Camelback Mountain and seeing tiny cars, glaring lights, and the entirety of the city below you. In fact, right now I'm having one of those moments. We're closing this chapter of life and opening a new one. A thousand different cliches are running through my head right now. Our heads, you know, beginning our journey of adulthood and moving through a new door. The future is so bright. Take the world by storm and make the world your oyster. <laughs> Even with all the relief and happiness that comes with graduation, there are some handfuls of fear or uncertainty. Some of that might come from leaving our families, and more importantly, our pets. But there is something that's inherently scary about leaving the halls of high school behind. And having to learn to cook for yourself. We will miss the familiarity of the heat advisory warnings that start and finish off the school year. And we won't forget the blue wall. It's just so blue. blue. <laughs> In other words, we're graduating! Okay, sure. In other words, we're graduating, moving on, traveling the path to our destiny. We're ready. Well, maybe mostly ready. Each of us was randomly selected to be a part of ASA, and somehow that lottery system picked together this wonderful group of people that comprised the class of 2021. Looking out at this space filled with sensational seniors, we are also looking at skilled musicians, dancers, and actors as well as creative thinkers, empathetic leaders, and social advocates. This skill set that we've internalized has pieced together incredibly strong individuals. But ASA is not only about the growth of individuals, it's also about what we've invented together as, as a, a collective. collective. During our time at ASA, we have shared so many memorable experiences. Like the celebratory ice cream parties we would have when we won Penny Wars. The members of that winning class would walk away with an ego boost to last a year. And the surprise parties we threw for our teachers. We all shared the laughter-filled hallways and the joy that came while signing yearbooks at the end of each school year. 
And we all know that when we walk through the double glass doors of North, we are immersing ourselves in a live radio station, complete with Sondheim solos, the recitation of monologues, enthusiastic group members, and the bustling production class students. We had retreats where groups of people from every grade came together for a day of complete community. We each recognize spring by the sound of brass and percussion being carried through the wind every time you step outside for three consecutive months. <laughs> we have created the change we wanted to see by using our collective voice. While observing and learning from real world events, we have influenced representation, awareness, equitable access, social wellness, and more at this school. And we all understand that shared experience of feeling so relieved right after you walk out of the room you did your third quarter presentation in. Especially after 10th grade through QP, where I had to compare the Aeneid to Toy Story 3 for the first and only time in my life. <laughs> Imagine comparing Woody the Cowboy to the heroic Greek figure Aeneas. And you would be lying if you said you didn't remember all those times school got canceled because of rain. All two of those times. <laughs> those great moments filled with joy and or accomplishment. That is what we're talking about. We'll reflect on those rare but impactful moments while thinking of an ordinary day at our little art school. Sure, we don't have a theater or a cafeteria and our teachers even share classrooms, but what better way to provide a sense of community? Using a room for signs in the morning and theater in the afternoon cultivated a relationship between the two sides of each ASA student, arts and academics. Sharing that classroom came with two different feelings, dreading an early morning class, and then feeling excited to go to that same room for an art. This daily transformation is perfectly representative for the multitude of interests that our class holds. Even with those diverse perspectives we have sitting in the audience, the class of 2021 has one thing in common. We, we aren't, aren't afraid, afraid to, to use, use our, our voices. voices. We've supported Red for Ed, Black Lives Matter, climate marches, women's rights, March for Our Lives, and we've even stood against dress code. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and in each of these demonstrations, we could look to our left or our right and see a familiar face, just like now. We are passionate, we are loud, we are empathetic. Part of growing up in this particular environment is resilience. This class shows up for things we care about and we do not take no for an answer. And we do this all while slanting. <laughs> Open minds, a curious heart, and strong friendships are the key ingredient to the senior class of 2021. And it is with these traits that we progress into the world. At the end of our time here, this is not only visible, but ingrained in each of us. The willingness we have to consider boundless possibilities and opportunities is a defining characteristic. And not only are we willing to learn, we want to know more. ASA's teaching style is unparalleled as it has nurtured our curiosity and innovativity. Through our history museums, Socratic seminars, and Miss Brown's unwavering support, <laughs> we are graduating! <laughs> <laughs> ASA has validated our educational needs but additionally our desires which has reassured us that we, we won't, won't have, have to guess, guess we'll, we'll know. know and even in those instances where we might have to guess on something at least we know it will not be as hard as all the conjugating we did in our language courses <laughs> and this year the year of college applications first jobs staying in and not going out the year of FaceTime calls, baking marathons, using your GoASA email, and learning your social security number by heart. 854-243. You're not supposed to tell anyone that. We started familiarizing ourselves with the reflective blank squares of our names in Zoom classes. And somehow these squares still conveyed the incredible resilience, creativity, ambition, and self-improvement that occurred on the other side of these laptops. Some of us got to return in person, but whether we were in person or remote, we, we were, were unified. unified. 
And today, as we walk across this stage, that sense of unity is with us. Around you, there is so much love. Whether we recognize it now or not, this will be one of those moments that never comes again. Graduating is an incredible experience. Graduating from Arizona School for the Arts prepares us to head into a world of people who use words like gentacular, discombobulated, belligerent, non sequitur, ubiquitous, and mellifluous. <laughs> so as we leave the foundation of our journey and make our way into the future, take this moment with you and cherish what is right in front of us. That, that it will, will never, never come, come again, again is what makes life so sweet. Your classmates, Eva Pruitt and Najmia Pat. Eva and Najmia, thank you so much for that speech. That was wonderful. Um, it is my honor to introduce our next speaker, which was our faculty speaker chosen by the class of 2021. Uh, they were lucky enough to have this teacher in seventh grade and in 10th grade. Uh, <laughs> woo, so I'm so excited to introduce our 10th grade social studies teacher as well as team leader, Mr. Eden Lukowitz. Okay, this is what 3QP is like, okay. Uh, thank you for that introduction, Mrs. Clark, and hello and welcome to the friends and family of the class of 2021, to the members of the ASA board and faculty and staff in attendance today, and hello, graduates. I'm not sure I like saying it yet. Some of you now know this, um, but much of the graduating class here was part of my first group of students at ASA when I taught them in seventh grade. Earlier in that year, I had eaten in the right Italian restaurant on the right night, right next to our head of school, and I was given the opportunity to apply at ASA. It was an eggplant parmesan for which I am eternally grateful. <laughs> there was a lot to love about teaching at ASA. But from the very start for me, it was the class of 2021. You immediately had an impact on me when I came here. As students, you were eager to learn, and you always had poignant, if off-topic, questions. <laughs> In fact, you very quickly exposed my teacher kryptonite, a fascinating tangent for me to go off on following a carefully molded question. <laughs> I didn't mind, because we were always learning. In fact, you made ASA a place that I wanted to get to every morning. I was excited to start the day with you and make an honest attempt to get through a whole lesson. I learned from you too. Not only did you teach me about the music you listen to, the books you read, the show you watch, something called Hamilton, you also gave me new perspectives on kindness and generosity. You were supportive and understanding of students who needed help. Every time you worked in a group, everyone was included. Everyone was encouraged. You embraced new students and new teachers like myself quickly and made them feel like they'd been a part of the community all along. You tempered me as well. I had been teaching in a school with much different expectations about students, and those expectations had changed me as well. But you all helped me make, make me a better listener and a more patient teacher and person, and that was because you had positive expectations. Expectations you never kept a secret. I was well aware of your expectations and that was a good thing. It kept me working towards a goal, a path towards the improvement of my teaching. So for those of you who were there for my first year at ASA, I want to say thank you. Now, as I began to write this speech, or at least as I stressed out about it after Chloe Monarch demanded a quality speech, <laughs> I thought about my own graduation. What was said to me? I'll admit now to remembering little of it at the time, except for a faculty speaker telling us this. If you graduates go out into the world 
and finding needing no more justice, no more hope, no more love, no more peace, then we, as your teachers, as a school, have failed you. I never thought about it much. I was likely fixated on what was for lunch. Graduating from high school in much the same fashion I had attended the classes. But when I returned to it 15 years later to watch a former student graduate, I heard the words again. This time I was listening. And this time, 15 years later, I knew what it meant. Many of you are aware that I spent some time teaching overseas before I, came to, uh, before I began teaching in Arizona. However, not many of you know the circumstances of my teaching over there, except for Katie Brown. Katie set a two-year reminder on her phone sophomore year, and two weeks ago she asked me to tell that story. Um, <laughs> shortly after I graduated from college, I was recruited to teach English in Incheon, South Korea. It would become one of the most transformative experiences of my life. I moved two days after accepting the job and began teaching at a small school. It was lonely. There were not many people to talk to as my Korean was and pretty much still is rather limited. But that problem was solved when the school closed six weeks after I got to Korea and I had to re either return home or find a new job. While I was lonely and I had not had great teaching experiences, I was determined to stay because this was the first great adventure of my life and I was going to see it through. So my recruiter found me a new job just south of Seoul, and at first it was much better. There were English-speaking teachers at the school and in my building that I could talk to and spend time with. The older students provided me with the truly excellent teaching experiences. But slowly I came to realize why there were open positions at this school. We had a 12-hour workday, but were only paid for seven or eight of those hours. We were not allowed to use sick days unless we got them pre-approved, which made sense, because I can usually predict days ahead when I'm going to be sick. <laughs> they had misrepresented the ages I would be working with as I became a preschool teacher who spoke English. Imagine Mr. Lukowitz teaching preschool. <laughs> so I decided to speak to my school's director uh, and ask for the opportunity to find a new job. I was roundly refused with the addition of a threat that my apartment and my working visa were tied to the school. So if I decided I wanted to find a new job, I would be finding a new country. Um, needless to say, I was not thrilled with their response. I began speaking to ex other expatriate teachers in my town and found that these conditions abounded. Many teachers uh, were faced with the same working conditions. So I came up with a plan. Form an association of expat teachers in our area and use collective bargaining to reform working conditions. It was a bold, brash failure. <laughs> uh, my employers got wind of it and told me that I was free to find whatever employment I wanted as long as it wasn't in South Korea. Of course, I was upset, but I remember that when I stepped off the plane in Phoenix, I held my head high. I believed that I was doing the right thing and I accepted the consequences. It also gave me my direction for the next decade. I learned that I loved teaching and working with students. I found a passion for advocacy and negotiation. You never know when that opportunity to find out who you are will present itself. For me, it wasn't so much going away to Korea, but coming back, that was that opportunity for me. Okay, so how is that related to my graduation? It was there in Korea that I learned not just that the world sometimes need more justice or more hope, but it's our responsibility to stand up for what we sincerely think is right and be prepared for the consequences, just or unjust. But I think you already know that. This class, you graduates before me, are the most active, compassionate, civically and socially engaged class I've ever worked with. This community at ASA, the, the way that students and teachers speak to each other, the recognition of work still left to do, the celebrations of diversity and unity is your imprint on this institution. It was you who highlighted inequities on campus in the last few years and have pushed us to recommit and do better. More of you than any other class I'm aware of who worked directly with political campaigns and put actions to your beliefs, whatever they are. This class actively seeks the literature and voices of marginalized people in our society to learn more and consider how to respond and best support them. You have been making and remaking the ASA community and informing its ideals and its very soul since your first days on this campus. 
So I'll go back to my own graduation and the words that were said to me. I have no doubt that you will all seek out justice and peace in all places for all people because you have already been doing that here in our community. So let's take a step forward. Let's talk about leadership. You all, with the rest of this nation, with the rest of this planet, have lived through 14 months of incredible challenges on many fronts, and the landscape has continued to change. Your resilience and commitment through this last year, as well as your years in this community, have shown that you are ready for the challenges ahead, and that you can lead others through them together. So as you join new communities on your college campuses, new cities and towns, new parts of the valley, remember that leadership first requires listening. Remember, learn, just as you've done for your whole lives, who your neighbors are, what their dreams and fears are, what their story is. Leaders in a community understand where those around them want to go. It's a leader's job to take them there, but only after they understand where those people have come from. Be a leader and listen, then speak. Some of you often ask if this class is my favorite. While we teachers never have favorites, I can tell you this. I will never forget you or how important you have been to me. You have made an indelible mark upon me and upon this school. Your humor, your joy, your passion, your generosity will be a guiding light for classes for years to come, and it certainly will be for me. I wish you all the best of luck, and I warn the world beyond those doors, young people of exceptional talent and character are coming, and be prepared. Congratulations, I will miss you all. Thank you so much, Mr. Lukowitz. Our last uh, selected speaker is our student speaker selected by their peers. And although this student does not need any introduction, I do want to say a few words. <laughs> um, this student has been absolutely inspirational, I know, to all of you and also to me. Um, he was one of my last students, so I'm a little sad to see you go <laughs> um, for that part of my life. But I am so thrilled um, and so excited to hear what you have to say now, but also in the future. So without further ado, Brandon Harris. All right, y'all. Okay. Hello, class of 2021, and congratulations. We have come a long way to get where we are here today. And on this beautiful summer morning, I am proud to be able to share this moment with you all. A moment when we can all cherish our achievements and look forward towards our future. A future in which there's an essential statement that we can all hold dear and self-evident that the truth of hope will continuously surpass the darkness of fear and of bigotry. When I first came to ASA, I had nothing more than a yellow folder, an empty backpack, and yet a passion to improve my life. Back then, when I was just adjusting to campus, hoping to make it to class on time, hoping to take my notes with that borrowed pencil and that thin sheet of line paper that I had, that when all I hoped was to catch that 5 a.m. bus ride in the early darkness of the morning so that I could make it to school here on time. Back then, when I had to choose between my education, and hunger. And now, at no time did I ever think that I'll be here now, standing 
in front of you all, speaking to you about the power of hope and how it can impact our lives. And yet, today, I leave here with more than just that yellow folder. I leave here with the tools and knowledge to go to college. I leave here today with a backpack full of resources that will continue to guide me in my ongoing education. And yet, most importantly, I leave here today with that same passion, that same driving flame I had and hope not only to better my life, but to also help shape it around the goals of giving hope to those without the means to fight it themselves. That stories like mine help to speak to us all about a better future. That a story of a tall black boy born and raised in the Midwest with a crippling speech impediment who grew up impoverished with every possible challenge in his way, is now able to not only envision his dream, he can manifest it. He can believe in his dream to do more. So that when the time comes, he's able to go back to his community and to teach the children of our world to dream bigger. For this is the meaning of this ceremony. That this is my call to you, graduates, my ask to join me in being an example to those and others because as that timeless creed calls for, we are our brothers and our sisters keepers. We have made it through the last year, y'all, and despite a raging pandemic, lending chaos to our world. And yet, we have showed true and unyielding solidarity in times of uncertainty that this same solidarity, which has become an unwavering symbol of our generation, will continue to guide our morals and our convictions as we become the young adults we are preparing to become. That here today, I say now, to anyone who still doubts our power and our passion, to anyone who still questions our strength, and our resiliency as a class that, to, that today I show you that today that that symbol has become an unwavering, an unwavering symbol of our generation, which will help to continue to guide us as we move forward. And that tonight, like I said before, I show you, I show you the audacity of hope. To believe in our capacity to adapt, to, a, to thrive. That the audacity of hope here today is what bears true witness to our achievements here tonight. That while, that while we have hope filled in our hearts and our eyes geared towards the future, that we are not just a collection of individuals, in a single classroom, but a united voice dedicated to changing the future in whatever path we choose to walk in the next. And that with our vision, we will soar the vast skies and stars with endless imagination and explore the deepest crevices and cracks of our earth with no fear. That with no care to the enormity of the task ahead. We embrace the challenges of which you are faced with. And so today, we are surrounded by loved ones who seek the best for us. That we owe a huge debt towards the contributions of getting us here today. 
We also owe a huge debt of gratitude towards a multitude of teachers and staff here at the Arizona School for the Arts that with their guidance and their teachings, are we able to forge an idea of what our tomorrow should and better yet could look like? And so I ask you now, once more that I that once more, that same ask I stated when I started, to stand with me here today, to believe in the fundamental truths of passion and of integrity and in hope, that together we can and we will be the generation of the better. That in my years here at the Arizona School for the Arts, I have come to discover that there's one singular word that speaks for the plurality of us all. The word we. That with we, there's always someone next to you, ready to carry you on, to encourage you to do more. That with we, as a class and as a community, come to understand that the tough challenges ahead cannot be met with the mindset of one, but by the mindset of us all. And so, it is with passion and with the courage of, convi of conviction, bounded with a strong sense of self, that we take our next steps into the world as no longer observers, but as leaders of our future. Thank you and congratulations to the class of 2021. We did it, y'all. I'm so thankful I don't have to follow that, Mr. Luna. <laughs> Brandon, I have no doubt that we are going to see you again out there somewhere leading the charge, and I'm so glad you signed my yearbook. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Lukowitz, thank you for reminding me of the power of leaning across a crowded restaurant and shouting, hey, how's the eggplant parm? Well, selecting a, a commencement speaker is always quite an odyssey of seeking someone who can both inspire and relate to smart, curious, outspoken class of ASA seniors. This class surely is a flagship in that regard. This year I am honored to welcome a community and educational leader who exactly fits that bill though. Mr. Paul Luna has been the president and CEO of the Helios Education Foundation since 2006 and as the executive leader of that amazing organization, they have made a profound impact on education in our entire state. Mr. Luna has shaped and promoted the strategic direction of Helios as an organization committed to creating pathways for success for all students to succeed in college and ultimately their careers. Helios is rooted in values of collaboration and inclusion and is particularly invested in supporting our fastest growing population in Arizona, our Latino community, in completing two and four year degree programs. Helios' support begins in early childhood and extends across the continuum of education and I am so very honored and delighted to introduce this year's commencement speaker, Mr. Paul Luna. Thank you, Leah, for that introduction. And uh, my first learning of the day is uh, I hope I never have to speak after Brandon Harris again, ever. Uh, but I'm happy to follow him and his leadership and what a, a great message he delivered to all of us and especially to his peers, his graduation peers. Uh, well done, congratulations. So let me add my voice to, to those that have said already as well, to all the graduates, congratulations, Graduates, give yourselves a hand. 
There is nothing like the excitement of a graduation, and I'm truly honored to be here today to celebrate one of life's most important milestones with all of you. When I shared with my friends and colleagues that I was invited to join you today and to provide your commencement remarks, the universal advice was to keep it short and keep it simple, and whatever you do, don't try to be funny because you're not funny. <laughs> and uh, that last piece of advice came from my wife who's here to make sure I don't try to be funny. So I promise to take their advice, but I hope that in the next 10 minutes or so, I can celebrate with you and I can challenge you. I challenge you as you transition into the next phase of your life. So as I begin, I do want to begin with some thank yous. Thank you to Board President Dr. Tony Dietz, the ASA Board of Directors, and in particular Board Member Javier Cardenas, a longtime friend who invited me, new friend John Snyder, and of course Head of School and CEO Leo Fergulia. Did I say it right? I was practicing. I was practicing. Uh, but thank you all for inviting me to be part of this special, special occasion. I think we can all agree the class of 2021 is extraordinary. You have faced challenges that no other high school seniors have faced, and you have handled those challenges with flexibility and understanding. However, I know that many of you don't want to be defined by the extraordinary events of the past two years. And that is exactly why I believe that regardless of what has happened, you are an exceptional group of students. You have not allowed external circumstances to define, to define who you are and what you do. You are relying on your own inner passions, your agency and drive to take you where you want to go. And you are not allowing circumstances that are out of your control to slow you down. There is no question in my mind that this group of students will change the world for the better. I had an opportunity to meet some of you a couple weeks ago, and I think it's fair to say I found you truly amazing. You shared your wisdom and thoughts with me, but you also shared your thoughts about what you wanted your graduation experience to be. And one thing that came out loud and clear was the importance of friends and family, those who have supported you and cheered you on to help you get to this stage today. So together, let's take a moment and make those acknowledgments. So I want to ask the friends and families of the graduates who are here today to please stand. And I want to ask the graduates, you stand, you turn, you find your family, and you thank them for what they've done for you. I think that's what makes graduation special. Graduations are special because it's not just about the graduating student, but it's what it means to the family. It's what it means to the friends. It's the impact it has. It's the legacy that you are leaving for others to follow as well. And as a family and as a community, we embrace that and we congratulate you. In my work as the head of an education foundation, I have the privilege of meeting lots of students and visiting different schools throughout both Arizona and Florida. I am grateful that there are schools like the Arizona School for the Arts, schools that provide an exceptional education while also allowing their students to explore the arts and develop their passion, a place where you can develop discipline and commitment to your craft while also embracing academic excellence. ASA is truly a school like no other. And I want to congratulate ASA, its leadership, its faculty, its staff, all the students, everyone who has contributed to the 25 years of excellence that this school represents. Congratulations for what you have created at this school and the students that you produce. In spending time with some of the members of this senior class, it became very clear that this student body is extremely caring. And you heard that, I think, in Brandon's remarks. You care about each other, you care about your community, you care about your art, and you care about the success of others. I was also struck by how you value and respect diversity, and you champion the expression of that diversity. The uniqueness of this school has allowed you to come together from many different places and from many different cultures. And your appreciation of that diversity is exactly what we need in our country today. You are modeling the way we need to behave as a broader society, and I'm thankful for students like you 
who helped to change the way that we as a community relate to one another. A big part of your, of your appreciation of diversity is your commitment to all manners of equity, whether that be education, race, or social justice. Your experiences here taught you the value of open and transparent communication, including both listening and learning. This resonated with me as we have the same values and principles at Helios Education Foundation. As a foundation, we're dedicated to creating opportunities for all students in Arizona and Florida to succeed in post-secondary education. Helios advocates for equity from early learning through post-secondary education on behalf of all students, but especially those who are first-generation, low-income, and traditionally underserved and underrepresented students. We advocate for resources and systems that support students achieving their dream. We promote equal access, connecting each student to his or her full potential. And we envision a future transformed by the transformational power of education. This is a particular priority for me and something that's very personal. As I grew up in a small copper mining town of Miami, Arizona, and I had the opportunity to then graduate from Stanford University, my wife was raised in a small copper mining town of Superior, Arizona. We get into arguments a lot about which community was better. <laughs> I'm not going to say any more because she's here and she will hear me. She graduated from Arizona State University. We're proud to say we were both first generation college students. But our path was challenging, like many of yours, and I'm sure yours will be. We needed a lot of help and support. We are grateful to the individuals who believed in us and helped us have this, the access to the opportunities that are not always available to everyone. We were able to take advantage of that support. These personal experiences has led me to commit my life through Helios Education Foundation to ensure that every student, regardless of their background, regardless of where you're born, who your parents are, the color of your skin, who you love, what you believe, every student should have access to a quality education and the opportunity to earn a post-secondary education degree. This is how Helios shows our commitment to equity and social justice. And I will say, I think we all need to commit to these shared beliefs. But these beliefs cannot just be words. We need to take them to action. We need to stand together as one with a diverse multitude of people, help each other and help each other realize our collective dreams, fulfill our individual potential, and reshape the future of our country and the world together. It is gratifying to see this bright, talented graduating class embracing and representing our mutual commitment to issues of equity. And I believe your generation will lead the way in making equity, race, and social justice a reality in our country. And I truly believe that. So as we come together today to celebrate your graduation, we also come together today as a community. And it's a community that will remain committed to actively supporting you as you take your next steps in your life. We are, we are celebrating with you not only your accomplishments of today, but the accomplishments that we know you will have in the future. And although I am meeting most of you for the first time, please know that I am also your champion. I will take great pride in what you do and the success that you will have. And please put my name in your phone and contact me if there's ever anything I or Helios Education Foundation can do to help and support you be successful. I know it's a cliche, but I will say it anyway. You are our future. And I am confident that we will advance as a community, as a state, as a nation, with your passion and commitment at the forefront and you all will lead the way. So as I conclude my remarks today, I'd like to give you five quick pieces of advice that was given to me and has proven to be true throughout my life. Number one, be true to yourself. Work on becoming a better you. And it's not about competing with anyone else or measuring your success compared to anyone else. It is about you becoming the better you because there is only one of you and we need all of your unique talents, passions, and abilities to make our communities better. 
Number two, don't be afraid to fail. We all fail. We all make mistakes. It's what makes us better and it's what makes us stronger. At age 30, Steve Jobs was fired by Apple, the company he actually started. Twelve years later, he came back and he made Apple what it is today. And he developed the iPod, the iPhone, the iPad, and so many other things. When he was 30, he failed, but yet he succeeded. Number three, don't let anyone limit you because of your age. Remember people like Amanda Gorman, who spoke so eloquently at President Biden's inauguration, or Greta Thunberg, who has challenged world leaders to address climate change. These are young adults who, like you, have a message for the world. And as I've heard from your, from your peers earlier, you all have a voice and you're not afraid to use it. So use it and change the world. Number four, don't try to do it alone. Find your community. Find individuals who have similar values and priorities and learn from them and share your learnings with them. Collaborate and partner together. That's how true change comes together, is the collective we, as Brandon said. And number five, never forget, you can always come home. As you take the next steps in your life, without a doubt, many of you will go on to continue your studies and pursue your art in other places. As you continue to drive to achieve your dreams, stay committed to your journey and have confidence that you will be successful. But also, please stay committed to home. Stay committed to this school, this community, and this state. You can be the leaders that will take Arizona into the greatness of the future and the potential that we have as a state. And I have no doubt that your leadership will make that happen. So in closing, I just want to say to the graduating class of 2021, once again, congratulations. But my challenge to you is simply this. Embrace your future. Be the leaders that you are capable of being. And please, please, change the world and make it better. Congratulations. It is, a, it is difficult to speak with a mask. It is a privilege to verify that all the students seated here in the class of 2021 have met the rigorous graduation requirements set forth by Arizona School for the Arts and the State Board of Education. Graduates, it's time to get your diploma. As the graduates come up, yeah. As our graduates come up, there will be a, a photographer moment here. So families, if you wanna prepare yourself, it will, it will be a brief moment, so please get your cameras ready. Additionally, graduates will have you, instead of doing the handshake in light of COVID, we will do some fist bumping or elbow bumping, okay? That's it, no hip bumping, that'd be weird. All right. Let's get this started. Savannah Abdullah. Melvin Altamirano. <laughs> Riley Baggett. <laughs> Tiffany Bowers. Aiden Briggs. Emily Briggs. <laughs> Catherine Brown. Trey Cardi. Yeah. 
Melanie Caro. Kyle Cohen. Sol Cosentino. Abigail Kripe. Evan Colbertson. Nyla Curd. Grace Cusick. Eva De Menenses Martin Slanger. No, Eva. Hold, please. Remember that one time during graduation when we had a slight pause? This is it. We found it. Eva graduates. Eva De Menezes Martin Slanger. Hannah Dempsey. Naomi Dubovis. Grace Durkin. Hmm. We have hers? Yeah, sure. Cat. Uh -uh. Where's Demby? We have a few out of order, everyone. It's our first pandemic graduation. All right, we're on Catalan. Catalan Denby. <laughs> Danielle Espinoza. Carly Flader. Leilani Garcia. Isabel Giacalone. Gabriela Gortorez. Maya Handelman. Brandon Harris, Jr. Zachary Hendon. Emma Hill. Johan Hofberger. Riley Hoyle. Thomas Johnson. Hayden Jones.
Alexis Keen. Alec Cotter. Riley Keel. Ariana Llewellyn. Amelia Ludke. Brooke Magnuson. Henrietta Manzanera Schnick. Dylan Manzanera Schnick. Alondra Martinez Perez. Chloe Monac. Charles Moore. Ellery Mosier. Jalissa Navarro. Riley Novak. Claire Novak. Kaylee Olney. Ayla Parsons. Jonathan Perry. Oh. Eva Pruitt. Alec Purcell. Maddie Ramos. Shayna Raphael. Alexander Richardson. Grace Rojas. <laughs> Amelie Satterley. Savannah Saunders. Scully. Samuel Snyder. Oh. Zachary Snyders. <laughs> Stephanie Stoffel. Maya Stovall. Dylan Swartz.
Kyle Simmons. Daisy Taylor. Abigail Thielen. Aliyah Thompson Mazeo. Mia Torres. Anna Travis. Eamon Trong. Ryan Upsall. Alex Watson. Megan Zebek. Congratulations, class of 2021. Please stand, class of 2021, please remain standing. Graduates, you have amazed us and inspired us. You have made us better and stronger, and you are forever a part of our community. As our last order of business, please move your tassel from the right to the left to symbolize your completion of your high school career. Congratulations. Congratulations, students. Families, please remain in your seats while we allow the graduates to exit as well as the faculty and the board. Congratulations, students. Class of 2021, please exit. Oh, get them out. Ushers. I don't know why. Everybody that was on the list walked, right? Yes, Wasn't but we were missing someone. Oh, okay. Let me give you this one. Okay. I think it went right here. I think it was Hannah. You can have this. There you go. Thank you very much. You bet. Thank you. Your time today. Thanks, Christina.
What? I'll do, I think Jenny and Jess are already doing that. Yeah. Awesome. Great job. Sorry about that.